Hello, when I went to the library to get the, uh, the Living, the movie called Living, uh, I found this one, Throne of Blood. Uh, this is an adaptation from Kurosawa's film to the British setting, right? Okay, so this is an adaptation from uh, England, uh, Shakespeare's Macbeth to the Japanese Furo era setting by Kurosawa. So I watched this a couple of days ago and uh, I realized uh, this one, um, you know, I watched it a long, long time ago and it was a very, very good film, very um, stylistic uh, film that uh, I knew that was coming from Shakespeare Macbeth at that time. And uh, I was impressed with by the Kurosawa's movie making, uh, adopting this Shakespeare play. And uh, so that's, I remember, and that's also the last scene of the death of Macbeth was very impressive in this film. And so uh, I wondered this time, uh, I watched again, and uh, yeah, I, I like this film, a very stylistic and beautiful, like a foggy scene and so forth. So I remember uh, <coughs> a while ago, 1970, I think I came 1976, so probably about 1980, I saw uh, Roman Polanski's adaptations of Macbeth, uh, which I really loved. A very mystic, foggy uh, landscapes and uh, lots of lots of fighting scenes. And uh, I saw in this particular Throne of Blood by Kurosawa also shows this particular uh, foggy atmosphere uh, and uh, the, the horses is running, always moving towards something uh, somewhere else and uh, um, very, very dynamic shots uh, everywhere in this particular film. And also, I remember this Roman Pransky's uh, Macbeth, uh, there's uh, this witches appear there. But that's all about it I remember. So this time, well, I have to know more detail uh, and try to find the, uh, the movies, uh, Romanski's um, Macbeth, a tragedy of Macbeth, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't find any uh, viable uh, movies. I think the YouTube there is a one there, but uh, uh, yeah, I missed it. And I I really felt that uh, while I don't have to necessarily uh, have to watch uh, the uh, uh, this particular film, so I realized that maybe I can get the synopsis, and I got the synopsis. So after um, reading the synopsis of the Macbeth. And I realized that there's several things. The very, very minor thing is changed in Kurosawa's film. Like, a, you know, from three witches, uh, because just because we don't have witches in Japanese uh, history or whatever, that storytelling, we don't have witches, but we have this spirit, a mountain spirit, a ghost type of spirit uh, in Japanese folklore a lot of time. So Kurosawa uses that spirit, uh, not the three, just one spirit appeared in Kurosawa's film. And uh, uh, also some of the, uh, uh, the characters also altered or changed. Uh, in the original Macbeth, there is uh, this King Duncan uh, who Macbeth killed, but King Duncan has a son. Uh, Malcolm, and uh, 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 he f freed to the uh, England from Scotland, and uh, 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 also uh, I think uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, Banco, Banco, Macbeth and Banco, a uh, friend who fought together uh, uh, with the Norwegians and the Irish. Uh, battle 
and uh, uh, so they uh, coming home and they meet these witches, three witches, and uh, prophesize them uh, the uh, Macbeth to be the king of Scotland, and uh, also Banco's uh, descendants become a king or something like that. So. Uh, you know, that particular thing, I think uh, in uh, the Throne of Blood uh, prophesied, this particular spirit prophesied, yeah, uh, the, the Mifune is going to be the, uh, the Lord, and, but this other guy, I forgot the name, uh, whose uh, son is going to be a king uh, later. Uh, so, you know, they laughed at them. Oh, you know, that's kind of a silly thing. But all through, I think uh, this particular uh, Kurosawa's film, very, very faithful to original Shakespeare plays, a plot, plot-wise. And, uh, um, you know, the... Uh, toward the last, I think... Uh, uh, before they goes back to spirits one more time because he was afraid and uh, you know uh, make sure that uh, uh, the spirits gives another prophecy that you know he is going to be safe and but uh, the spirit says uh, in a Shakespeare play that uh, 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 you are not killed by any man who are born of a woman. And uh, uh, also until the forest approaches or get closer to him or something. And so uh, he felt uh, very, very safe toward the end. But of course that's not prophesied was again came true and so uh, the way they uh, concocted in the original Shakespeare's is that uh, uh, King Duncan's son uh, fled and uh, um, with uh, what is his name? Uh, Macduff? Macduff is the uh, um, character who was with uh, King Duncan's um, sides. Uh, but Macduff was, uh, um, uh, went with the King Duncan's son, uh, free to the England from Scotland, and uh, Macduff is the one who kills Macbeth later. And uh, Macduff, so Macbeth was prophesied that he won't be killed by any man who was born of a woman, right? But Macduff wasn't uh, regularly born from a woman, but uh, he was like a Caesarean section by, uh, you know, his mother. I think uh, uh, the mother died when he, he was born. And so uh, that prophecy came true, and also the until the forest approaches, and this particular scene of I think both um, the Roman Polanski's film and Kurosawa's uh, uh, film, the forest is approaching it was very very similar. I think they cut this particular wood. Uh, what kind of a name of the wood? It's called uh, uh, a burnham wood. A burnham wood, and uh, they cut the burnham wood, and they kind of shield and they carry with them. So if you're looking at from the the castle or the, the far away, you don't see any people. It's just the wood is there. Wood is but slowly approaching to the uh, this. Uh, castle. And uh, so uh, that means that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that prophecy again become uh, again, uh, true. Uh, but Kurosawa's film, 
this particular word is approaching is exactly the same. However, uh, who killed the, uh, the Bifune, for example, Bifune's character, uh, is not the same. Uh, Bifune was killed by his own soldier, his own uh, people who uh, are revolting him toward the end because uh, um, uh, they realized that uh, Macbeth himself, that Mifune himself, uh, become uh, kind of a deranged a little bit. Oh, there are one more thing that I have to uh, talk about is Lady Macbeth. Lady Macbeth was played by Isuzu Yamada, who was fantastic, uh, very, very no like a Japanese play. Uh, the, you know, the, her way of playing this Lady Macbeth was uh, very, very no or kabuki theater like. Uh, very, very impressive uh, by, uh, played by uh, Isuzu Yamada, and I like that. And uh, so uh, the particular um, death uh, at the end of the uh, Throne of Blood, the people revolting and uh, uh, very close by, they shoot the uh, you know born arrows arrows toward him, and they saw like uh, hundreds of arrows come to him, and the uh, the Bifre himself was uh, very deranged at that time already, and also he was also very confident that nobody killed him because it's impossible that man would kill uh, uh, him. Uh, any man, you know, the ball with the, uh, uh, the, the man, a woman. But that particular prophesy wasn't there in the uh, throne of blood. Instead, I think uh, uh, throne of blood, I think this, uh, his friend's son will be a king. And so uh, he will kill. The Macbeth, and uh, but uh, um, before this uh, son, friend son, approaches to kill Macbeth uh, with the shielding with this wood, and um, he was killed before that, that uh, uh, by his own people by the arrows. So that's a, a major major difference there. Uh, at the end of the uh, the movie, uh, I realized that's completely different. Uh, so, uh, yes, several things as a minor thing, though, uh, the different, but uh, mainly it's plot-wise, it's very, very, very faithful to you know Shakespeare play Macbeth, and uh, um, you know the scene by scene. I think the Kurosawa. Uh, enjoyed the Shakespeare play, played by Japanese people pr probably at the theater in, uh, in Tokyo somewhere and uh, he also read the, the Macbeth play uh, and he really loved the Macbeth play and uh, later you know much much later 1985-ish I think he made another Shakespeare uh, adaptation of King Lear and that became a movie called Rap, which is a spectacular film. And uh, so, uh, yeah, he did two times uh, borrowing, adopting the Shakespeare play, one Macbeth and King Lear. And so he is a, lo a lover of Shakespeare plays. And so that's what you can tell uh, Kurosawa himself is very, very, uh, you know, influenced by the Western uh, civilization, Western culture, Western movie, and uh, stories like that. And so that's why one of the reasons I think uh, Japanese people think that Kurosawa is not using a Japanese sentiment. Kurosawa is not you know, using the Japanese story. And that's uh, one of the major uh, 
criticism from Japanese people. Uh, and that's why he got a little, little bit uh, uh, disappointed, I think, annoyed, and he's getting uh, funds from overseas, like American, George Lucas and uh, Francis Ford Coppola and so forth. Um, you know, those money coming from outside, but not from Japanese funding. And that, you know, would tell you something about uh, his popularity uh, worldwide, overseas, but not much in Japan. And that's kind of uh, interesting. Today, I think Kurosawa uh, is uh, redeemed and uh, uh, they are the best Japanese uh, movie directors, I think, in Japan or worldwide. Uh, that's no doubt about it. But uh, um, during the 1960s, I think, you know, the Kurosawa has to struggle to get the fund to make a movies. And uh, there's a lot, lots of um, other reasons that uh, at that time, 1960s and 70s, the TV culture uh, becomes so big in Japan and the movie industry, industry kind of a dwindle. I think uh, 1950s, for example, very, very popular because many, many people went to see the movies. But after the TV came to their life in the 1960s, um, you know, they started to, to watch the TV more than movies, so they stopped going to the movie theater. So that's one of the reasons that uh, Kurosawa suffered from lack of fund uh, as well. So, yeah, uh, very complicated uh, stories there, uh, but, uh, um, you know, kind of amazing to see the Kurosawa's love for American Western movies, the John Ford movies, for example, and uh, uh, also Shakespeare's and uh, Russian uh, Gorky's uh, lower depth uh, type of stories. Uh, he was um, pretty much into those uh, movie making uh, coming from the outside sources. And uh, also, even though he uses his own ideas and so forth, uh, thinking of American Western authors like Yojimbo, for example, uh, he uses lots of American or the Western ideas of uh, what's fun, what uh, you know people enjoy and so forth. And uh, I think the Japanese uh, love that particular like excitement, movement, and uh, uh, artistic shot. And so uh, those things are, uh, I think, uh, Kurosawa is a talent there. And so, yeah, Throne of Blood. I think if you never, if you don't know anything about Macbeth, you just watch this, uh, you will know, wow, this is very interesting, a very artistic uh, storytelling, but you kind of know that's coming from Macbeth, even though you don't know much about Macbeth. 